Charlie's Angels is the latest box office bomb and a string of box office bombs. It is also causing some controversy amongst its filmmakers. You can get all into that on Google. Just Google it. I ain't discussing it here. For those of you that don't know, this Charlie's Angels is not a reboot of the Charlie's Angels film franchise of the series itself. This is a continuation of the original TV series as well as a continuation of the two Drew Barrymore, Cameron Diaz, Lucy Liu movies, Charlie's Angels, and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. When a young systems engineer, Elena Hoffman, played by Naomi Scott, blows the whistle on dangerous technology, Charlie's Angels are called to protect her and put their lives on the lines to protect all of humanity. Now, I do have Charlie's Angels and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle on Blu-ray. These are not good movies. I understand that. But they're silly, they're stupid, they're cheesy. And you get drunk if you watch them. So I suggest you do that. Going into this movie, I was kind of hoping that this movie would kind of follow in that same tone. It's directed by Elizabeth Banks. It's also written by Elizabeth Banks. We have Kristen Stewart, Ella Belinska, and Naomi Scott, my movie wife, as the Charlie's Angels. And the marketing for this movie just wasn't that good. The trailers didn't really get me all that excited for this movie. So I wasn't really sure what to expect. I kind of I was just like, we could just pass it up. It's something... That looks kind of mediocre. Charlie's Angels is a movie that is fun, but yet not fun at the same time. This movie is just a weird conundrum because everything that is good is balanced out by everything that is mediocre. And everything that is mediocre is balanced out by everything that is bad. So it's, it's a weird movie to evaluate in that regard. There's a lot of positives in this movie. There's also a lot of mediocrity, and then there's a lot of things that I didn't like in this movie. So let me start off with what I like. The three leads. Kristen Stewart, Naomi Scott, Ella Belinska. They have good chemistry together. They have that sisterly bond, I feel like. And they would put their lives on the line for each other. The only problem is I think people are going to really say that Naomi Scott is miscast, which she might be. I th here's how I think it should have went down. I don't think she should have played the systems engineer. She should have already been an angel, like Ella Belinska and Kristen Stewart were. Then you could have had the three of them protecting somebody else or something like that. I think that's how it should have worked. Instead of having two angels protecting Naomi Scott, Naomi Scott on the run and becoming an angel throughout the course of the movie. That's, I, didn't, I didn't think that worked at all. However... All three of them are really good in the movie. Their performances, not knocking them on that. Kristen Stewart's probably the best I've ever seen her. I don't really like Kristen Stewart as an actress. It's not because she's in Twilight. She gets a bad rep because she was in Twilight. That's not why I don't like her as an actress. I've never liked Kristen Stewart as an actress because she's one of those actresses that says her lines of dialogue and then fails to emote. And sometimes her line delivery just comes across as really poor. In this, I feel I feel like in the movies where she actually wants to be there and she's having a really fun time, like in this movie, she's really good because she is really good in this movie. I will honestly say that she might actually be the best part of this movie. Surprisingly, she had the best lines. She was the funniest one. She looked like she was having fun. She was kicking some ass. I was like, wow, this is Kristen Stewart. Keeps us up. She might win me over. I don't know. But this movie's characterization, especially when it comes to Naomi Scott's character, is really poor. And Naomi Scott's character, Elena, is one of the most annoying characters I have seen in a long time in a movie. Every scene where they're being chased, she's just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I'm like, I'm like, look, I like Naomi Scott as an actress, but man, this, she is annoying. And I'm not taking that. I'm not saying it's her performance because she was direct, she was instructed to do that. That's what's in the script. It's it's all the writing of the character. This movie has a really really thin plot. It's a predictable plot. You know exactly where it's going. You know who the main villain is right off the bat, and they try and do this whole plot twist thing, and it's like. It, we saw that coming from a mile away. And the action scenes in this movie, that was something I was really looking forward to. Because I was like, how is Elizabeth Banks, who wrote, directed, produced, and starred in this movie, or Jobs, going to direct the action? And it's pretty bad. It looks really bad. It's bizarrely edited. I don't know what the editing on that was. It's all quick flash cuts. You don't get any wide shots, and if you do, it's very brief and they're very minimal. 
Some of the action seemed out of focus, too. Why does John Wick have such great action? Well, because whoever's directing that movie knows how to direct action. They know to keep it in frame. They know to keep a steady cam. They know how to keep it in focus. And there's no quick cutting. That's why the action in John Wick is so great. Here, it's just... <laughs> Like, was that just annoying? That was really annoying. I just annoyed myself for five seconds. And, but can you imagine that in, in action scenes for a two hour movie, which by the way, this movie goes on for too long. Basically what this entire movie is, that's what the, that's what the entirety of the action scenes consist of. The first two thirds of the movie, I was rolling along with it. I was like, all right, this isn't bad. I'm enjoying myself enough where I'm like, this is a passable movie. And I still felt that way in the third act of the movie, but the third act kind of feels a little bit detracted from the first two in terms of momentum and intensity and energy. This movie just doesn't have all the energy. There are times where this movie feels like it's rushing towards the finish line. Then there's times where it's slowing the brakes down a little bit, and then there's times, especially in the middle of the movie, where there's nothing happening for an extended period of time. And it's just like, do something please movie just do something so while i did find some enjoyment in this movie i also didn't find some enjoyment in this movie there's i i really enjoyed watching the three leads i enjoyed watching them kick ass when that stuff was going down but that the editing in those scenes was very bizarre it was a lot of quick cuts and it just it kind of took me out of the movie out of the fun that I was having with the movie. And Naomi Scott's character is annoying. But the first two thirds of the movie are more interesting, I'll say, than the last act of the movie. And there's major pacing issues going on here. This is by no means a bad movie, but it's just kind of, eh, whatever. It's a really disposable movie that you could just turn on at like 4 a.m. in the morning on Netflix and just watch it. I'm gonna give Charlie's Angels a C+. Plus. Definitely not as cheesy or stupid, like in that way where you where you know it's bad, but you're but you're having such a good time that it's so bad it's good. I was really hoping that like this would be a movie where I could get hammered and love it, like I did, like the first two. I don't think that's the case with this one, unfortunately. But oh well, what can you do? It's not bad. I, I there was some enjoyment, and it's just really, really mediocre when it comes down to it. Guys, thank you for watching my review of Charlie's Angels. I will have more reviews coming very soon. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Madden, and I'll see you at the movies somewhere.